This is the USS Titan in Space Engineers. Well, it's actually the USS Titan A. If you're a Star Trek fan, you know which ship this is. Yes, it's also the Enterprise G. Don't get me started on that one. I know it's annoying. Thankfully, this has been recreated in Space Engineers, so now we can take a look at the ship. Hey everyone, my name's Captain Jack and welcome back to my channel. We're kicking Monday off with a brand new Space Engineers Workshop review. Remember, if you want me to check out your own Space Engineers Workshop grid, link it to me in my Discord server. The link is down below in the video description. So this is the Constitution 3 class. It is otherwise known as the USS Titan. It's also kind of known as the Neo Constitution class. It was seen in Star Trek Picard Season 3 as the USS Titan A and also the Enterprise G by the end of it. Spoiler alert, but you probably should have watched it by now. It's actually made by HG Liggett, T7, Commodore Keras and Zero. CMF. Zero is well known for making a many a Star Trek creation on the Steam Workshop and here we have another one. I actually kind of like the ship's design so we're going to take a look at it in game. So we're going to start on the underside here. As you can see we've got the iconic name bit here. NCC 801012. 801012. 801012. I did get it about the first time. Dash A. Interestingly we do have phaser ball turrets. You can see these down here and we'll test this out later. We are sort of a little subgrid sort of bit on here using these locks. It's kind of cool, um, so we need to take a better look at that. It's using the artillery cams, I think, and the cameras as well. Oh, it just makes me want to do a battle of this. I know I kind of say it every time, but I feel like we should do a Star Trek battle. We've not done one of those on the channel for quite some time. Still, the sort of source section is built very nicely, where I was using a combination of blocks here to sort of create this design, including armor panels. I love the use of those, particularly when it comes to building these sections around here as well. Everyone who knows Starfleet ships knows they've got a range of colors on it like this, so it's really, really nice. Now, in terms of windows, we don't actually have them here. Instead, we have these sort of like lit up blocks, which are sort of highlighting windows, which is still pretty cool. And that's how they're sort of built to life like that. I like it. It fits in with the design and, you know, just sort of works. So it's usually inset lights in here to get back to that, which is really cool. For those wondering, this build is moddable. So if you want to fit it with modded weapons or the shield generator mod, you can do, which is really, really nice. There are a couple of cool features on this. We've got an injectable warp core over here, which we'll check out in a minute. There's also the bridge, which is a subgrid, which is very cool. We've got the deflector dish up here. Personally, I would have stuck maybe an antenna or something here. So I'm going to stick it out a bit more. But it is just a flat deflector dish in Star Trek Picard. So that kind of makes sense. In the cell housing, we're actually using a blueprint here to create sort of like orange glowy or red glowy sort of buzzard collectors, which looks kind of cool. And behind them, we've got some regular sort of blocks to build it together. It's a good idea for a block. In here, sort of like the cell housing, we're using wood paneling to create a sort of striped effect. It's nice because it just creates that really cool and unique effect going back there. I like it and makes the cells stand out really well. Thankfully, the back section is in dark right now, so I can show you these areas. We've got the main hangar down here, which we'll take a look in a minute, but also the big impulse drives. You can see them illuminated red here. If I were to take the sun around, we can now see on top. What I really like about the Neo Constitution class is this sort of inbuilt area here where some of the impulse engines are. It's just kind of really cool and adds to the design, which is nice. You get it on both sides, which is really cool. We've got phaser ball turrets up top here as well. I do believe the Neo Constitution class did have phaser strips, so these bits here, uh, a bit like the Enterprise D did, so the phasers could travel around its energy and dissipate out of it, which is kind of cool. Uh, I also got the bridge housing up here, which is cool, and the cameras blocks as well. I really like those camera blocks, that seem used enough. There are shuttle bays here as well. I'm not sure we've got anything in this. No, we don't. But these are shuttle bays, which give me access, I believe, in Starship Picard. They did actually be able to fit like runabouts in there, so like they do not have class runabouts. Uh, if you want to check out a full breakdown of this ship from a Star Trek point of view, you can head over to youtube.com slash trekcentral. That is my other YouTube channel where we talk about the Constitution 3 class and very soon we'll be talking about the Enterprise G and the upgrades made for that ship. Okay, let's take a look inside the ship as I know you're all very, very keen to see what goes on inside. We're going to be here inside the hangar. Ta -da! Very nice. Obviously, you've got giant hangar doors here. Beep. There we go, big deep pressure eyes and open. Connector as well. So you've got some playability for the game, which I kind of like, so I'm happy with that. Interesting, there is a glass panel above this connector. I wonder if it still works if there's a glass panel in the way. That's something I might need to check out. Kind of cool though. Alright, we've got airlock doors leading around here. These are actually seem to be scripted for airlocks, which is nice, which means there might be a programmable block on board the ship. In here with the engineering bay. Now, we actually didn't see the engineering bay on the Constitution 3 class. I don't think Star Trek Picard actually had the budget at the time. So, big warp core here. It'd be nice to have some lights on it. Do we have any lights for it? Got any lights? Warp. Warp core lights. Oh, we can put them on. Hey, nice. That looks really cool. I love warp cores in Star Trek, and I love them how people create them in Space Engineers, because that looks really cool. I believe this is using a subgrid as well. Yeah, it has to be, because it's going to be ejecting. So we'll test that in a bit when we eject the warp core. Still pretty cool, you've got these access areas there, very much reminds of the Enterprise D and how you can connect with it. Going back here, we've also got the engineering big door we can shut things down with. Pretty cool. 
Uh, we'll check it there in a sec. I think this just leads around to there, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm continuing access. Did, was there an airlock around here if I missed that? No, we're still in the uh, drive section. If we go through this way, we can go up, which will lead us hopefully into the saucer section of the Titan or Enterprise G, depending which way you want to call it. Ta -da. There we go. With this door, we are into more of the source section here. What I love is the designers have really gone to the goal of adding the L cast of animations here, which is really nice. And it tells you what deck we're on. It's deck five and deck six. Actually, maybe one to the side. Deck six. Not sure if these are accurate. There's a shot of a one here, apparently. So, but what's in here? Is this the brick or something? Oh, this is the cell housing. So I think it'd be card there that's seen where um, there was work on the cell housing. So I'm guessing that's that. On the other side as well. Nope, the other side's got armory and brig. I'm guessing this is the brig. Yeah, that about makes sense. What have we got through here? Ooh. Oh, it was transport. It'd be transporter room, wouldn't it? Nice. Okay, cool. I had to think for that. I was like, it's not medical bay. It has to be transporter bay. That's pretty cool. I like that. I really like adding functionality. Ah, here's the medical bay. That makes sense. I love it when designers, space engineers, and workshop builders add functionality to their grids because there's just so much explorable stuff here. This is pretty cool. This is a fake window. You can't actually see outside of that because uh, it's embedded into the saucer. They're pretty nice though. I'm loving these screens. These blocks here, which are added in recent updates, really work well for these types of designs. So if you think you're building your own space engineer's design, definitely make use of these blocks in some corridor sections. They really expand on it. Right in here, I think this is just a mess hall and the bar. Yes, yeah, this is a bar. I think we obviously saw a bar in one of the episodes, which is a hollow deck program actually. Not sure if it is. Is this more crew quarters? That's more crew quarters. This should be an airlock down here. I think this is where I was originally going to come in. Yep, that's an airlock to the outer side of it. We don't want to see that. There we go. We are using some scripts on this grid as well, which is nice. Dun, dun, dun. Can we come out of here? Oh, there's a side bit here. Stuck in the stairs. I, lo I love these stair blocks they put in for Space Engineers because I keep getting stuck in them. Ta-da! We're on the bridge! Welcome to the USS Titan A. The bridge looks absolutely fantastic. Zio and his team have gone just massively, massively out of this world on building this bridge. It is a subgrid, so you know, keep that in mind. But there's a lot of design choice going on here, and it looks amazing. Like, you've got the three chairs up there. You've got the helm officer's chair, comms, tactical, the screens people can stand at as well, and they function. So you can have a whole crewed starship here in Space Engineers. If any of you actually do that, though, let me know. We've actually also got the conference room back here as well. Another sort of subgrid build, but it looks really, really nice. I love the way this is built. Oh, they've actually got the dedication plaque. You can see builders, HD, oh, is, is it T7, Zio, and is it Karas? I think it is. That is very nice. I can't read the whole thing. Can I see a big of a... I don't think I can see. That's the turn. How are they doing that? Mono space. Ah, you're using the old converter, aren't they? Through here, we've got the actual captain's ready room. I don't think we saw this in Picard. So, yeah. And this is just like a head. Okay. A bathroom. Yeah, we didn't see Shaw's ready room. Interesting. Replicator. I love this block as well, the replicator thing. It's really nice. I like that. Right, let's hop in a seat and give it a spin because I want to eject the warp core. Let's see. Can we eject the core? We'll turn the sun around so we can see this. Oh, it's going. It's going. There we go. And the core's rejected. Ejected, not objected. <laughs> there we go. We no longer have a warp core. It blows the hatch off and chucks the whole core into space. It would be good if I had like warheads on it. And like it exploded once it was ejected. That would be really cool. Now we're back in command. We can take this one for a spin and see how it handles. In terms of handling, it can get to speed pretty quickly. And goes back. It just really makes me want to do a Space Engines battle of this. Because these ships are brilliant. Alright, now we're seeing the phase in action. I spawned another of Zero's ships here. And we're sort of firing on it. It looks pretty cool. Oh, you can hear them opening fire. It looks fun, doesn't it? We'll change the sun around here so we can see them actually firing. That's quite a lot of firepower, which is going all the way into this poor nebula over here, which is getting torn apart. The poor nebula. So obviously, don't forget, this ship is moddable. You can add modded laser turrets in here and shields. If I were to do a Star Trek battle, I probably would add modded stuff to this. It just makes it a bit more Star Trek friendly, I think. But obviously, this is vanilla Space Engineers. You don't need to have mods to go and download this. I do believe you need access to some of the DLCs, but also if you don't have those blocks, they just may not be added to it, so it's fine. Still, it's really, really cool, um, and you should definitely check out Zio and his team's work. I believe H2's lead artist, Karas was the interior assistance and systems, Zio is thumbnail and author graphics, and Talia was the camera rig and subgrid stability. So a big hats off to all those guys. Uh, all of them put it here. I don't know if they're guys. All of them for doing some fantastic work on here. If you want to check out this ship, 
make sure to download from the Steam Workshop. My link is down below in the video description. Head over there and you can check out Zeo's builds. They've got a ton of other Star Trek ones as well, including a Picard Legacy Collection, the USS Wasp, the Excelsior 2 class, the Titan, which is the Lunar class, the Stargazer, I believe, is on its way soon, uh, and they've got the original Stargazer maybe as well. I know he's got an Enterprise F. So I really want to check out the Enterprise S soon. That could be really cool. Alright everyone, thank you very much for watching. I've been Captain Jack and I'll see you this week in some more Space Engines videos. Goodbye. <laughs>